Good evening and welcome to Sports Reel. First, two items of news. The winner of the Scottish Greyhound Derby was first, we'll see, 6-4 on favourite. Second, Fairies Chum, 3-1. And for football fans and boosters, the result of today's one late kick-off, English League Division 4, York City 0, Workington 1. Well, back here in Scotland, the league programme got well underway. And here are tonight's facts and figures. Nine wins in a row for Morton. Rangers and East Fife also unbeaten. First win of the season for Falkirk. First defeat for Hibs. Another 3 0 win for Motherwell, and that record of Motherwell grows. In seven out of eight games, they haven't lost a goal. And finally, two sides that have still to win a game Queen of the South in Division 1, Forfar in Division 2. The day's biggest crowd went to Ibrox to watch Rangers and Celtic in their third game of the season. And here it is on film, Rangers against Celtic, the commentator George Davidson. Rangers and Celtic coming out together on local derby day. And I see Mr. Longs, Mr. Kelly, the chairman of the team, everybody's doing everything they can to bring peace and goodwill to this great game between Rangers and Celtic. Rangers kicking off in the dark jerseys in the third game these teams have played in so far this season. Celtic going into attack right away with Wilson the outside left of Rangers. And here is Clark playing at right half and Lennox the outside right inside to Turner. Very well through. Goal kick for Rangers. Ritchie and there's McKinnon back again. So Rangers have played this team, same team in seven games. Can Celtic do something with the pressure they usually build up in the first 20 minutes? As Divers of Celtic, centre forward lying deep, and Lennox coming in, and if that's the way they're going to shoot, they might do something in the first 20 minutes. They've got a corner right away. The Celtic supporters in full cry as Brogan takes this corner, but it's not a good one. As I left Wilson, with Turner coming into the picture. Nicely to Lennox. Celtic's ball. Lennox to Turner. Lennox sure trying to do well and it's Greg who clears. There's Turner nicely in. And it's a goal! It's a goal! It's goal by Who is either brought no Chammers. Chammers is the man. Well, that's Ringo Celtic on the way. And here's Devers. Proven. Okay. Forrest to Wilson. McNeil. Give me away a corner. Wilson take the corner. And Henderson is there. Forrest. So you wonder how he missed that one, Brand. And it's Mackay's head that puts it over the bar. Henderson. It's a nice cross. Here's Wilson. But it comes out to Lennox. It's outside right the way back there. Turner. Over here. Well, and it's Turner. And a free kick against Greg. McKinnon. McKinnon's got a great deal of confidence in problem because he has many of these square passes. Here's Baxter, being tackled by Lennox. Clark, the right half. Mackay, Turner, Wilson, Mackay puts it out, 
grinning all over his face. Back there to Proven. Here's Forrest. Coming through very quickly. And it's a corner. Happy Luke Lowe should have held that one. Henderson taking the corner. Neil, the right half Greg. Goal kick. About three minutes to go. Chammers. Chammers to Devers. Chammers, is he going to get there first? Brogan, across the Lennox. And Chammers! Well, if ever there was a lead off, just on half time. For the score, Celtic 1, Rangers 0. Celtic kicking off in the second half, leading by one goal to nil. Goal scored by Chammers after about 10 minutes of the first half and here they're going to attack with Brogan getting it through here's Devers backing up Devers with Shearer and that's Richie to the rescue that was Brogan who's moving out with him and Forrest of Rangers we've seen very little of Rangers forward line here's Wilson coming in the guys played him very well in the first half back sir McLean and Turner. Henderson and McLean takes it. There's O'Neill, you can see him better in this half, playing a left half today. That's McNeil. And this is O'Neill, the left half. And McLean with him. Brogan, the outside left of Stelty. Turner. That's a left Rogan. On to Greg, his right half. Okay, Baxter. And happy at his best. You see with the wind behind him, what Richie can do with the ball. And there's a bit of confusion. And it's O'Neill, the left half. Who gives away a corner, now it's Gemmel. Wilson taking it. Turner, out to Devers. On to Brogan. Brogan's quite willing to take on Shearer. He's got more speed than Shearer has. Brogan takes the throw. Shearer. Greg, the right half. As I said already, Gemmel's watching Henderson like his brother. And here's Forrest. Forrest. And McLean gone through intelligently. And he scores. Happy was badly positioned. And there it is. Baxter. Devers taking it. Devers has put in a tremendous power of work today. To Turner. Lennox. And it's a goal kick. Mr. Watt looking to his linesman. Linesman. Giving a corner. And so Lennox is taking the corner. Baxter to Bren, on to Forrest. Neil looking a little anxiously one way and another, and here's Bren coming through with Clark. Bren right in, and he scores. He scores. After 20 minutes in the second half, to make the score, Rangers 2, Celtic 1. And there you are, one end to another in a split second. Henderson to Bren Bren It's a nice cross Miss Clark taking the throw Turner 
Chambers. And here's Brogan coming in and a wonderful save by Ritchie. Oh, Brogan was right on the dot with that one. And he gets a corner, that's all. And that was how it finished. Rangers 2, Celtic 1. Rangers' third win in five weeks over their old rivals. In Sports Real star rating, Richie and Greg outstanding for Rangers. Mackay for Celtic, Brand of Rangers, Divers and Chalmers of Celtic, the only forwards worth a mention. And incidentally, Brand's goal today brings a total to six, only three behind leading scorer Jim Forrest. And a footnote to this match, in spite of the appeal made by the chairman of both clubs and the Lord Provost of Glasgow, there were still no fewer than 15 arrests for rowdyism. At Rugby Park, Kilmarnock beat St Mirren 2-0 with a couple of goals scored late in the second half by Black. Archie McPherson watched this game. And the goals came so late and with so much effort, I'm beginning to wonder if Kilmarnock are really going to be the force they have been over the past few seasons. Certainly they look like the same team, they're big, they're fast, they're strong and direct, but at the same time there's a dreadful lack of cohesion in midfield and the forward line certainly has lost a lot of punch and drive. For this I'd mention two players. Firstly, the tall, gangling left half, Frank Beattie, whose role as a six attacking forward today seemed to do nothing more than congest his forward line. And secondly, young Hugh Brown, and this is a tragedy. He's a fine player, very fast, has a tremendous shot, but he's trying to be too unorthodox at the moment and is completely out of touch, not only with his play, but with his home spectators who boo every time he touches the ball. If he gets back his form, cuts in much more often, crosses the ball, then this Kilmarnock line is going to be very menacing again. As it is, they can thank Bertie Black for having snapped two fine goals within five minutes of each other late on in the second half. As for poor old St. Bernard, well, you know, I think they have only two consolations. Firstly, that Clooney is still one of the best center halves in the business. And secondly, that Dick Beatty's slimming pills seem to be very effective indeed. Uh, but unfortunately, Kilmarnock still look like champion runners-up. Rangers and Celtic at Ibrox, Hearts and Hibs at Tynecastle. And the Edinburgh derby produced six goals. There should have been plenty of excitement. Let's see. Hearts and Hibs, the commentator, David Francie. And it's Hearts who leaped the way onto the field. That's Captain Danny Ferguson who led them out, playing in the unusual position for him of inside right. The Hearts team this afternoon will be Crookshank in goal, Shevlin and Holt are the fullbacks. The halfback line, Barry, Poland and Higgins and the forwards, Hamilton, Ferguson, Laurie Davidson back at centre forward, Wallace at inside left, and Tommy Trainer at outside left. And it's John Grant now leading the Hips team onto the park. The Hips side undefeated yet this season in seven games, and today their team is Simpson and Goal, Fraser and McClelland are the full-backs. The half-back line, Grant captain at right half, Easton and Preston, and the forwards, Scott, Martin, Baker, Byrne, and Eric Stevenson. And Jerry Baker now kicking off for him. Hearts have won the toss, and they'll be attacking the goal to our left. Here's right half, Grant for him. Beaten by Trainer, out of Ferguson. Ferguson again. They go again, and this is left half Preston. Scott stopped by Higgins, now it's left back Holt. Now Grant with the throw. Oh, right to the feet of Wallace. Eric Stevenson out on his own on the left. Oh, nicely cut off by Shevlin. Oh, Stevenson with the throw to Preston. Oh, there's the red-haired right back of Hart. Shevlin on the ball now, giving it to Ferguson. Nice one to Wallace. Oh, and a nice ball forward to Wallace. Davidson. Oh, that was Eastland who skied the ball over his own crossbar. Hamilton with his corner. Wallace waiting for it. Cleared away by Grant. 
Now it's Martin. With interception by Poland. Oh, that's a lovely ball through to Wallace. Is this number two? Yes, it's there. Another goal, and it's Willie Willis, the heart inside left, who makes it hearts two, hits nil. So once again, Baker kicks off. Hibbs will really have to do something quickly now. Two goals down, half an hour of the first half gone. And here's Norrie Davidson for hearts. Fred away by Fraser. Trainer turning it back to a halt. Grant down to Fraser. That's Morton, number eight for Hibbs. The free kick against Higgins, a free kick to Hibbs. Now right back, Fraser with the free kick. A very good one. Just and it's Davidson kicking off for Hearts at the start of the second half with Hearts leading Hibbs by two goals to one. Eastern now for Hibbs. This is Davidson trying to get his way through. Eastern clearing away. Now Poland. Oh, that one by Poland. Picked up by Baker. Baker to Scott. Higgins number six going across on the corner of the opening seconds to Hibbs. Not with the corner. It's a good one. Martin. And it's just over from this angle. It looked as if it were in the net. Crookshank with the goal kick. Burn out to Scott. Oh, Grant taking the throw. To Burn. Burn has changed places with... The inside right, cleared away there. Hamilton out to Davidson. Now Hamilton. This is Ferguson. Oh, what a chance for Wallace. Yes, it's there. Now Baker with the throw. Back to McClelland. Now it's Preston. And here's Danny Ferguson for Hearts. Forward to Wallace, the man who scored Hearts' third goal. Now Davidson. Three goals to one, Hearts lead. And it's Wallace taking this corner for Hearts, just about 15 minutes gone. The second half, three goals to one, Hearts lead. And that's Hamilton, number seven. Winning a corner for Hearts. Uh, Hamilton. Then getting it away to Baker. are certainly in command at the moment. This is Trainer pushing it through to Wallace. To Hamilton. What a sprightly winger this is. Johnny Hamilton for Hart. Now Ferguson with a chance of just losing control. This is Byrne. Hibbs not moving the ball as quickly as they did earlier on in the game. Stevenson is better now. Burn. Baker. All the there. Davidson kicking off for Hawks. Right hand Barry. 
Easton to Stevenson. There's Barry over the mistake. This is and Martin just thwarted there by goalkeeper Crookshank. Stevenson with the corner. Hart's all back in defence now. Fraser for Hibbs. Baker. Oh, that fine piece of work was by Willie Poland. Hart centre half. Now it's Holt. Wallace. Just touching it on the trainer. Might have Grant. Oh, Poland and this is Baker. And he's just managed to get a corner. Well, Hibbs in full cry now for the equaliser. Martin. We had the way by Poland. Oh, this is Ferguson. Number eight. Oh, running right into trouble, but Davidson backing up. And there's a free kick against Grant. Number seven is Hamilton for Hearts. It's a lovely ball. And it's there. Yes, it was over. It was over. It was Murray Davidson who scored. And the result, Hearts for Hibs 2. This was Hibs' first defeat in eight games this season. And here, according to our commentator, David Francie, is how the individual team members performed. Hart stars, Cruikshank, Shevlin, Higgins, Ferguson and Wallace. And hardly a failure. Simpson and Grant are top men for Hibs. And now, a quick round-up of the other First Division games from Murdoch McPherson. Partick Thistle have been playing some of the most attractive football in Scotland for the past couple of seasons. There's only one snag to this. They haven't been scoring enough goals. And after all, that's what counts. Thirds won today's game at Cathcart against Party because they took the few scoring chances that they had. The star man in Dundee's 4-2 win over Aberdeen at Petondry today was Alan Gilzean. He scored two of Dundee's goals. And the big difference, you know, between these two sides really was that Dundee's forwards were goal-hungry right from the start. And when Aberdeen did build up an attack, they found goalkeeper Bert Slater of Dundee in the five-star class. And Alan Gilzean's two goals, by the way, put him on the nine-goal mark so that tonight he heads the top scoring list along with Jim Forrest of Rangers. Unless Airdrie can put some more punch into that forward line, then they look like being relegation prospects even this early in the season. But in spite of losing 3-0 to Motherwell today, Airdrie surprisingly don't have any real defensive problems. That's because players like Hannah and Keenan are really playing so magnificently in their defence. Dundee United beat their local rivals St. Johnson 3-1 today in a game that was marked by its boisterousness right from the start. Indeed, goalkeeper Taylor of St. Johnson had to go off for a while he had to have a head injury attended to, and Carlisle of Dundee United and McIntyre of St. Johnson both had their names taken. Queen of the South, well, they lost 2-1 to uh, Dunfermline today in a game that won't even get half a step down memory lane. Falkirk. Well, they got their first win of the season today against Falkirk's other first division side, East Stirling. Were there any talking points in this local derby? Alistair June. Yeah. Quite a few, Murdo. In fact, the main talking point is whether, in fact, these two sides have got the ability to stay up in the first division uh, this season. The game itself was a most disappointing affair. The only highlights, a goal by Maxwell of Falkirk after four minutes and a few late flurries from East Stirling. Between times, football that I can only compare to a British railway sandwich. In other words, not much of it and what there was, pretty poor quality. The main fault I found with both teams was that they still don't seem to realize that football is a thinking game and that mere physical effort without a great deal of brain work is going to get them absolutely nowhere against the classier sides of the first division this year. For instance, neither team seems to have a great deal of knowledge of how to utilize the open space and the finishing of both teams, well, you had to see it to believe it, it was that bad. Two players I thought that did stand out were Columbine of East Sterling at right half and the left half of uh, Falkirk Fulton. Both players got through a power of work without a great deal of reward for their efforts. Overall, though, I wasn't taken with either of these two teams and frankly, I can foresee difficult times ahead for both of them. Golf. The News of the World Professional Golf Championship was won at Turnbury by Dave Thomas, the long-hitting Welshman. In the 18-hole final, he beat John McDonald of Bedford 3-2. and two. Thomas, a semi-finalist three times in the last four years, was unbeatable today. 
He reached the turn in 34, three up, and then winning the tens with a birdie three, he was four up with eight to play. From then on, Thomas wasn't perhaps quite so impressive, but anyhow, MacDonald couldn't catch him up. By this victory, Thomas wins uh, £1,250 and qualifies automatically for a place in the British Ryder Cup team, which play in America next month. And now for, uh, we go back to football with a roundup of today's second division games by Sandy McLeish. What about this Morton Monopoly thing? Well, Morton are the only team in Scotland now who have won all their games so far. That's League and League Cup. And it was ex celt Alec Byrne who was the key man in their win over Air United today. But I gather the Greenock team weren't at all impressive. And the same can be said of both Clyde and Queen's Park who met at Shawfield. I saw this game and it was most disappointing. A penalty goal by Hood, four minutes from half-time, was all that Clyde had to show for almost 90 minutes continuous pressure. Their forwards failed badly at close quarters, and Queen's front five were equally bad when it came to finishing. So it was a case of defences being on top most of the time. However, those two points keep Clyde in second top, just behind Morton on goal average. And following the two leaders are four teams on the four points mark. Stranraer, Arbroath, Queen's Park and Stenhouse Viewer, and at the bottom, three clubs without a point. Alloa, Berwick Rangers, and Forfer. And, believe it or not, Brecon City are now in fifth bottom place. Great stuff. Pigeon racing. Yesterday saw the start of yet another Usher Vaux Young Pigeon National. The birds were released uh, from Cheltenham on Friday morning into a headwind. The first of them clocked in at Echo Fechen around three o'clock. A flying time of six and a half hours to a distance of 224 miles. To pigeon fanciers, that means a speed of 1,003 yards per minute. But to the rest of us, 34 miles an hour. Altogether, 2,073 birds set off from Cheltenham. And here in the studio is the winning bird with the owners, Jack and Eddie Gilmer of the partnership of Gilmer Brothers and Martin Dare of Echo Fechen. Well, I don't know which of you two chaps to congratulate whether I should say it to you or to the bird. Certainly it's a magnificent performance from, from the three of you. When did you start, uh, Eddie? When did, when did you take up pigeon racing? 1957. That's about six years ago. Yes. Uh, wh why did you take this? It's a rather unusual sport, up. Good clean sport. Why do you say it's a uh, clean sport? Oh, you can't do a pigeon. Once you release them, it's up to the brain. <laughs> how, how many pigeons do you have, Jack? Well, more there were 20 young birds and there were 25 old birds. Plus uh, old birds a year and over. Well, uh, an old bird of a year is, is hardly an old bird in some parts of this world. Uh, Jack, what does it cost to take up pigeon racing? Well, you buy the clock and the baskets and get a good breed of pigeons. Mm -hmm. Takes quite a, piece, a bit of money. H how much did this bird cost you, for example? That bird from the bottom cost us about two pounds. Well, that's a pretty reasonable amount of money. But, and can you get birds more expensive than this? Yes. What do you look for in a bird? C can you point it out to me here? What's the most striking feature of a bird, Jack? Well... <coughs> Nice shaped head. Oh, there's a wing going up. You better hold it just a wee bit tighter than that, Eddie. A good strong bark. And good strong wings. Good feathers. Well, thank you very much, and I hope that in the future you're going to keep on winning races, the three of you. Oh, sir. The rugby season opened in Scotland today, and there were a few first-class games in the west of Scotland. Alan Glenn's FP held Kelvin Sidakis to a 5 all draw. Hutchison's FP beat Glasgow Ackies 8-3, and on the borders, Hoyk beat Melrose in the final of the Elston Sevens for the third year running. Well, thank you, Archie. Next Wednesday, the first leg games in this season's League Cup quarterfinals will be played, and we'll be here at 11.20 in a special edition of Sports Reel with film of one of the quarterfinal reports on the rest and a round-up of the night's second division league games. So, till Wednesday, good night.
John Waterman. And if, in fact, anyone wishes to speak from the floor, they would try to catch his eye. 